Before we get started, will please now be mute recorded. your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noises will interfere with the meeting. As chair of the select board, due to the COVID-19 slash coronavirus crisis, and in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically, and these reasons shall be reflected in the minutes. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is to confirm that, A, we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone. Members of the public wishing to attend this meeting electronically may call the following conference call number at 1-866-899-4679, access code 817-026-717. B, additional public access by video or other electronic means will be available as follows. We are using the GoToMeeting platform for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and, if necessary, participate remotely using your smartphone, tablet, or computer at global.gotomeet dot me forward slash town of Tilton forward slash selectman. This information can also be found on our website at tiltonnh.org under meeting schedule and agendas board of selectmen. C. We are providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access the meeting via telephone conference or go to meeting. And instructions are provided on the Tilton Town website, tiltonnh.org, and at the town kiosk. We are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting that a member of the public wishes to speak or be recognized during any public comment or public hearing. If you're a member of the public listening in and have a question, please write your questions down. And at the end of each agenda item, I'll ask you if there are any questions from the public before we move on to the next agenda item. Please state your name and address and then ask your question when called on. E, we are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are any problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please email web at tiltonnh.org, which will be monitored during the meeting. F, we will adjourn the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, we will adjourn the meeting and have it rescheduled at that time. Please note that all votes uh, that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, also please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting. This is required by the right to know law. Um, and and uh, I would like to uh, have a pledge of allegiance. I have this flag that I received from the town administrator. And if you'll all please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'm sure that was really confusing because of all the microphones, but we got it in. Okay. Um, roll call attendance vote. Constantino. Constantino, yes. There's one in the house and one soon to arrive. 
All righty. Peter? Dog present, one in the house, two dogs in the house. Uh, I am here, uh, Jessamine, and uh, my wife's somewhere around here outside planting plants or whatever. Uh, Pyra? I am here. I have four other people in the house. However, I am in a closed room. Alrighty then. Uh, John is not here at this time, John Scanlon, and he will be joining us as soon as he can. Uh, okay, the agenda. First agenda item is to review and approve the minutes of 5 7. Uh, are there any comments, concerns, or additions, subtractions? Okay, hearing none, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of May 7th as presented. Is there a second? Constantino, second. Is there any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Pat? Constantino, yes. Peter? Uh, yeah. Jessamine, yes. Eric? Pyra, yes. Okay, it's unanimous. Um, the next thing on our agenda, we're a couple minutes ahead, uh, is Kevin Duval, our public works director. He's here to give us an update on the Department of Public Works activities. Kevin, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Excellent. The floor is yours. Okay. Um, Jeannie, are you there? Is Jeannie with us? Yeah, she's here. She's her microphone. Yeah, here. There you go. Yeah, okay. So, well, um, Kevin? Go ahead, Jeannie. Well, I, w I was just going to say I'm, I'm happy. To, I think I already reported to all of you that uh, everybody's back to work, and uh, it's been a little – little challenging i think for the dpw given what what's been going on for the last month or so but especially in the last few days but i want to say i think uh kevin's done a great job holding everything together so i'm, I'm uh, just to give him wanted to give him a shout out there well well thank you um and just to give you an update on steve's condition I just wanted to give you an update on Steve's condition. Okay. Um, he's, he's still really um, sick. Um, 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 hold on, hold on a minute. Just FYI, um, personnel. So let's not use oh, names. Okay. Gotcha. Kevin? All right. Okay. Nice. Uh, thank you for reining me back in. <laughs> the uh, the gentleman is is still fairly sick, and um, I, I'm having him stay out for a couple of days just to make sure that he's still. That he's in good shape when he gets back. Um, his, like I said, his his test was negative um, for the COVID, so I was very happy to hear that. Um, I called everybody else and in, back into work, um, and they were able to actually complete the work being done at Senior Center. We were able to the uh, floors got put in, and we were able to put the offices and stuff back together today. Um, we had to adjust the size of a couple of doors because the floor height changed. We were able to complete that today, um, so that was nice to finish up. Um, the uh, the next thing I, the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the sign, the speed limit sign on High Street. Um, the only thing I'm waiting on now is for Dig Safe to do uh, the uh, the markings so that I can. Um, install that sign or relocate that speed limit sign um, that was agreed on the other uh, in another meeting uh, I, pre I was told that I should be clear for dig safe by next Tuesday so I'll plan on relocating that sign then so that's going ahead as, as, as planned uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was I was informed that John Scanlon wanted to wash the the statues in front of town hall um and i wanted to just let them know or let the board know that uh, when they when that work is is scheduled that i could provide the barricades 
in the in the cones for safety while that work is being done um, and then we also have the uh, hot pressure washer and some brushes and things of that nature to help out with that process um, oh, thank you Kevin uh, John's not here right now but he'll be joining us yeah okay um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the I know everybody's probably wondering when the sidewalk will be paved. The uh, that was delayed a little bit because we were, we were trying to find out if the uh, businesses and the restaurants were going to utilize the sidewalks um, during the temporary outdoor seating for this COVID situation. Um, Jeannie and I walked. And discussed the the situation with the business owners, and uh, we were able to to um, have a conversation with with each business owner, and, and we were able to clear that up so we can actually proceed with that without any more delays. Um, after we after we spoke with the business owners, I, I contacted Jeff at R and D Paving and let him know that it that we were clear to proceed and he had to talk with his construction outfit and uh, or his paving outfit and, and try to narrow down the time slot for them to come and do that work. So that's what I'm waiting on right now. Um, he's supposed to let me know by tomorrow or Monday at the latest and we are pushing to get that done before the end of the month. Um, so that that's progressing nicely. Um, the uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the, I know everybody probably still sees that dry hydrant behind the fence or behind the hand railing at the True Green accident site. Um, I had to order the parts for that because nobody carries the six inch or eight inch pipe um, fittings, so that had to be ordered in. Um, and, and one of the pieces is actually brass and nobody carries it so that had to be ordered in as well um, the brass brass cap um, which was actually damaged when I was trying to remove it initially because it had been on there so long the corrosion set in and even after heating it with a torch it was still um, compromising its integrity so I decided to leave it because um, it can still be used by the fire department right now if I if I disrupt it anymore, it won't be able to uh, to help. Uh, the fire department wouldn't be able to use it until it was repaired, and I just didn't want to do that until I get all the pieces together, and then I could do a complete repair. Um, the guys are are continuing with their their springtime activities. We're going to start painting crosswalks next week and um, lining the parking spaces. And doing the stop lines the street sweeper is scheduled to start next week as well um, I'm excited to work with this new company because he's self-sufficient he's going to be uh, filling his own water tank we won't have to um, follow him around with a pickup truck or I mean with a dump truck because he, he can dump right at uh, the DPW um, garage or the back yard there is Phil so it'll be less intrusive on our crew to have this company come in and do it. So I'm excited to, to get that done. And I did ask him to sweep all of the roads in town. Um, and I gave him a detailed list of all the roads that I wanted him to do. I remember in, in one of our previous discussions, um, the question was brought up if we should put that kind of uh, load on our multi one and the guys and I feel that this new company is going to be quite efficient and get the job done quick well we won't really have to um, put the pressure on our guys and our our equipment to get the job done and they can have the dust control and all that so I, I think that it'll be a good um, a good job done with K and KRM, and um, my guys can be freed up to do other things around town, like um, painting the sidewalk. I mean, painting the crosswalks, 
and working in the parks and getting all the other spring spring um, projects completed. Uh, so the the last thing I wanted to talk about is the, the Cedar Street project. Um, I know there's a few questions about that. Hey Kevin. Yes. Kevin, were, were yes. you going to talk? Were you going to talk about Amnesty Week? Oh, that's right. Amnesty Week. Um, Jeannie had had asked me uh, last week if there was any way that we could actually go forward with Amnesty Week, and if I could think of any any ways of of having or uh, of proceeding with Amnesty in a safe manner um, through this COVID situation. And I th I think I shared a basically a, a drawing or an outline of the layout of the shop. Did did everybody get? Uh, a copy it's of that. On the, it's on the screen right now. Tim just put it up. It is okay. So basically, the only the only thing that I would like, or that I, the biggest problem with amnesty is the chaos and the congestion behind the shop, and everybody's trying to dump their trash into the dumpsters. Everybody's been is aware of it. Uh, I know all the selectmen have seen it firsthand. And the biggest thing that I could think of <coughs> is to just allow one vehicle out there at a time. So we would have a gate set up at that far right <coughs> corner of the building with a with a guy, uh, an employee of the town standing there, and um, he would let one vehicle in. They would dump their trash, whatever it is, whether it's metal, household burnables, electronics, whatever they're getting rid of. And as they see that vehicle leave, because he will have a line of sight for the, for the exit, he will let another vehicle in. The, the added stress to that kind of situation <laughs> is the, the line of vehicles that would be waiting to come in. So um, with that in mind, I looked at <coughs> Route 3 or, or West Main Street, and there is enough highway there or enough roadway there for us to cone off an, an actual entrance uh, standby lane along Route 3. We could ask the PD to, to set up a detail. We could have some signage and some cones so that people know that they have to get in line and, and come in to use the transfer station. That, that's So we would have one person to let people in. And I know in the past, a lot of us have helped people unload their, their trash and their materials. That would be the other change. Um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't allow anybody helping the people coming in to dump. The larger items, we could utilize the um, excavator with a thumb with uh, two operators that are very good with that machine to minimize obviously damage and things of that nature. Um, but large and large pieces like sofas and, and people have brought in some pretty heavy things in the past. And I, obviously I don't want to see anybody hurt themselves. So we could utilize the excavator to move the larger items into the dumpsters when necessary. But we would ask that anybody bringing material in there, they would handle it to dump it themselves and then they could exit. So that's basically my thoughts on that. We wanted to present it. The other, oh, let me let me back up a minute. The other thought that I had was in the past, we've had it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four days in a row. The change that I would propose is instead of four days in a row, maybe we could stretch it over, stretch it out over a month and have it so that it's four Saturdays in a row so that it would minimize the impact of, of four days of chaos or four days of traffic being congested. If we could stretch it out so that four Saturdays, we could have amnesty Saturdays basically. Where everybody knows that they can come in on a Saturday. It stretches it out. It kind of minimizes the anxiety of having to get it all done in one day or, or in four days. Um, so that's, that, that's basically the, all of the changes that I would propose 
to have amnesty during this COVID situation. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. Um, Pat Constantino, would you like to ask questions about the plan? Uh, I just have one concern about the full, I think it's an excellent plan, but I, I just have one concern, and it's really not a concern. It's actually, I could go either way, but I'm thinking about the four Saturdays because kind of sort of like the reason why we, uh, one of the reasons is that people start a project and they empty out a building or they, you know, clean up an area or whatever, and it takes kind of two days to come to the the transfer station and drop everything off and they don't complete it one day, they finish it the second day. And uh, this way, if you have four Saturdays, they got to wait another week and weekends are valuable to the families. So they got to give up another week just to get this done. So, I mean, that's just, I, I can go either way. It doesn't matter, but uh, I, that was just my thought when you said that. Okay. Okay, thank you, Pat. Uh, Peter. Kevin, when you were talking about coning off a lane for going into DPW, are you talking east and westbound or just uh, westbound? Just westbound. If you're going to do that, then maybe have the variable message board up ahead of time a few days alerting the traffic just of the pattern might be beneficial. Oh, very nice. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's all I have on that issue. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Um, I have, well, I have questions unrelated to this, but we'll get back to that. Um, if you think this is what's going to work best for you, then have at it, in my opinion. And after the first weekend, if you need to tweak it, then you can do that too. How about you, Eric? Um, my first thought was the traffic and looking at your plan. What if we make this like a buffet line where, where you have your arrows, you put your dumpsters so that you can serve both sides of the dumpsters and get twice as many people through the line. Kevin, I understand. Yeah, I understand that. It's just uh, the, uh, what my, um, experience in the past is when people are are loading their trucks it's they're they're not in order like you're going into a grocery store and, and you know where everything is it's there's a lot of people going back and forth back and forth because they don't load their their vehicles in the order of our dumpsters um so there's a lot of chaos where people are are crisscrossing um because we have certain staging areas for certain items um, so one person might have a TV loaded first, the other person might have it loaded last. And our TVs are, are, are at the very end of, of the, the dumping line. That, that's, the, that's the only problem I see with that. Unless we have two, two separate um, staging areas or two separate areas of, to dump uh, specific items, I, I'm not sure how to logistically get that accomplished. With the, the, the limited space that we have all back. Can I say what, something to that? What if you um, hold on, Pat? Yep. What if we if we if you had a schematic of how it's laid out and we publicize that so people load their cars appropriately so that they can get rid of their trash and I mean you know you, we have to go do shopping a certain way now we have to go you know I want that box of chips ahoy and I gotta go all the way around the aisle now. And come back down the yep. aisle the right way. You know, it's kind of a way that we're getting used to it these days. Yeah, no, that's that's very doable. Like we could we could um, set up a schematic where everybody knows where everybody's where all the dumpsters are and try to get it out there. Try to get try to communicate it. Um, but you know, on the other on the other side of that, there are, are just a number of people that that don't look at the websites, that don't pay attention to to uh, those publications and, and they just, I, I run into it every week where, where people come in and, sure and um, they just don't run, they, they, uh, they don't do the research on their end to make things easier. Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm all for trying it. 
Thank you very much. Pat, would you like to say something? I think that we have to look at the safety aspect of this too, because, you know, I, for one, I, I, not only myself have I've done this, but I have seen this happen more often than not, where people have come up to a dumpster like the wood dumpster and thrown a piece of wood in thinking they're getting it into the dumpster and it lands across from the dumpster on the up, clear across the other side of it. And if there's somebody on the opposite side of the dumpster doing exactly the same thing, they may get hit with that piece of wood. So we don't really want to have that two people on either side dumping and throwing things into a dump dumpster because if they overshoot it, there there could be some injuries there. Okay. Now, could uh, I could uh, I say something? Amy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, Personally, I, I love the fact that Kevin's taken the initiative. I think he's heard and listened to people about their frustration that not, you know, we're not doing Amnesty Week. He's come up with a solution um, that keeps his people safe, uh, gives the residents what they need. Um, I love, I love Peter's idea about the variable message board. The, the more communication that you can give, the bet, the best, the better, the best. Um, and the only question that I have for Kevin is, if the select board approve this, when would you propose to start this? Well, I would like to set up, uh, there has to be a transition time so that people can, can get um, notification that it's happening and how it's happening. So I would say, like, if we decided on it tonight, or, or right now in this meeting, then I would like at least two weeks to communicate what's going on and then start the, the amnesty days. Um, I'd like to give at least two weeks time to get the, get the word out that it's happening and this is how it's happening. So just, can I follow up, Joe? Oh yeah, by okay. all means. So um, if there's a potential, Kevin, though, <clears throat> that if, if that's what you're talking about, today's the 14th, two weeks, 28th. Um, we could very be cross our fingers June 1st out of this. I'm not sure that we will. Um, so I, I guess you could start it if you started it the, first, the last Saturday. And to Pat's point, um, that's Memorial Day weekend. I, I don't know how oh, okay. people will be doing something like that, but... <laughs> You know, you could do it on a Friday, Saturday, Saturday that first, that you know, that last weekend in May, and then three Saturdays after that, or something like that. And by that sure, time, sure. we may back be back to normal. I don't think we will, but maybe we will. Memorial Day is the twenty fifth. What's that? Okay. Is it Memorial oh. Day the twenty fifth? Um, I don't. Know. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, yes it is. All right, so um, I would make a motion to... Uh, Selectman Scanlon present. Say what? <laughs> I am present. Um, John Scanlon's here. Oh, John, how are you, buddy? It's marvelous. Uh, yeah. Would you like to uh, weigh so in on the plan? Yeah, just real quick, love the... Great collaboration. Um, I have the utmost faith in uh, Kevin's wisdom. So uh, I'm good. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I would make a motion to go with the plan that Kevin has presented with the modifications that work for him. Um, commencing on the, what I want to say, the 20... Third, 22nd of May. That's one week. Okay. So the 29th of May. Correct. Okay. Commencing on the 29th of May <clears throat> to uh, begin the amnesty month on Saturday. Is there a second? On Tatino, second. We have a motion and a second. Um, I, it now occurs to me that I did not ask for any kind of comment from the public, and I suspect we might have one person on the line. 
Um, is do you have any any kind of comment? Okay, hearing none. Uh, we have a motion in a second. Roll call vote. Constantino. Yes. Fog. Fog, yes. Jessamine, yes. Pyra. Pyra, yes. Scanlon. Scanlon, yes. Okay, the motion is unanimous, and we'll start getting the word out as soon as we possibly can. Okay, Kevin, you have more on your report? Yes, I have one more one more item to discuss, and it's the uh, Cedar Street patch that just that was just performed <laughs> by uh, R and D Paving. The um, so I don't know if everybody remembers what happened last fall, but there was a bunch of water being pumped out of a basement and it was ending up in the roadway right around the time that I was trying to get that project buttoned up with the base or the binder. Um, just to give you an idea of how much water was being pumped into that roadway, it was a gallon to a gallon and a half per minute, which was about 1,500 gallons in a 24-hour period, and it had been happening for a few weeks. The day of paving, I was working with R&D with hauling stone and the ledge pack up there to try to stiffen up the base so that they could pave. Um, and, and we we knew that there was gonna be an issue in the springtime because of the water intrusion. It was obviously my decision to go ahead with the paving so that we had pavement down so that we could get into our winter months and plow without issue. Uh, in the springtime, I met with R&D Paving, and, and we settled on a, a section of pavement that had to come up and be replaced. Um, I'm not sure if, if you were forwarded the pictures, but when my crew removed the asphalt that was compromised, we took numerous pictures to show the thickness of the asphalt, and every measurement was either two inches to two and a quarter inches to two and a half inches. And the, the minimum was two inches compacted. So there, the requirements were met as far as two inch compaction. But the water, the water intrusion uh, compromised the base layer, which compromised the, the way that the asphalt settled on top. And I, it, it just had to come up and be replaced. The measurements for the patch was there was one section that was 10 feet wide by 25 feet long and uh, that um, measurement equates to 3.9 tons of asphalt at two inch compaction and they did use a three-quarter binder which was um, mirrored off of the original contract the other the second patch was a much larger patch and it was actually on the downhill side of that road because that, that road is pitched um, one direction for water to run towards the catch basin. Um, that patch is 12 feet wide by 338 feet long, which equates to 50.7 tons of material. Now, I got the last tonnage slip from R&D Paving to, uh, for that patch uh, work and they put down 57.09 tons of asphalt which was slightly over the amount of asphalt um, compared to the the um, basic math equations which is telling me that they put down a, a, a thicker base or a thicker layer of of, um, uh, of the aggregate um, so I just wanted to to just give you a, a general um, description of, as to what happened with that. And, and, and now we're, it's, it's completed, there. we're ready for the, the top coat to go down and, and there hasn't been any other issues with that. Are there any qu questions concerning that? Uh, um, I, did, I, did, I did, I'm sorry, I did uh, take a bunch of pictures today and I hope that they're in front of you for, um, for your viewing. 
Uh, it shows the starting point and the end, and it's actually there. There should be a picture that shows the, the slope of the road. Um, it actually starts at 26 Cedar Street and goes towards um, Maple Court, and it just past Maple Court in front of that red house. Um, in in the the largest patch is on the downhill side, which is where all the water would collect anyway, um, if it was coming into the roadway. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. I think we'll start the commentary with Peter. Peter? Okay, so yep. we didn't do cars. Um, we don't have the tonnage slips from when the project was done, correct? I, I actually just received them via text message from Jeff. I haven't been able to upload them uh, or, or email them to anybody. So I do have them. And I haven't yeah, been able to, to, when, to get them to you. When the project is occurring, the truck driver comes and there's usually at least two slips. We didn't keep a copy yep. of the slips to ensure that because we can tell Pike print Town of Tilton project and the mix can go anywhere. If we don't have the slips, we don't have that accountability, Kevin. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't have any slips. No. And I believe 26. Uh, the water had to flow uphill on Cedar Street a ways, and I'm not sure how it's crossing. And what I recall, it came out of 26, sort of meandered across diagonally for a short ways and then followed the gutter. So to say the whole lane was our fault, I would uh, respectfully disagree. That's all I had. Well, to okay. Can I, can I say something? Sure. Okay. It was my decision to go a few feet further up the road and a few feet beyond just to eliminate any possibilities of something being missed. That was that was the whole the whole point of our of R and D and myself getting together because I didn't want anything missed and and they were eager to work with me and to do what I asked. So if it goes a little bit further up Cedar Street than you would have liked to have seen, it's it's because I asked them to because I wanted to be covered without any issues. So there's no warranty guarantee on any workmanship. Okay, thank you. Well, I don't understand that. That that wasn't our fault. That was the water intrusion. How can? Uh, okay. Kevin, I spent all season paving. I paved on gravel that's wet. I've paved where they had to use a grader okay. to get the snow out of the way. Um, you can okay. do it. Okay. I have something to say. I don't think we can hear Joe. I'm not hearing anybody on my end except for you, Pat. Oh, good. I can talk over Joe now. Let me see if Joe, I can get it back on. I would say go ahead, Pat. Okay. To, Eric, I understand that this is a this is an area where it's this is I don't know your first one, but this is a project that you started, and ultimately we're going to need to pay this. However, I what I don't understand is I went out there in the downpours of the rain and saw the water coming. We have the in, water intrusion up at Twenty Six Cedar Street, and that was there for a few weeks and then it stopped. That water intrusion went down to the basin by the couriers, which is down by the old Daniels parking lot by the fire hydrant. Beyond, beyond that 15 to 20 feet beyond that in the middle of the road was a huge, huge pothole. That didn't have any water intrusion. As a matter of fact, when you follow in the worst of the downpours, in all the water coming from Maple Court down to 
uh, Cedar Street, it went into the drainage. It didn't even come anywhere near that pothole area, yet there was a breakdown in the road on Cedar Street. So I kind of understand where you're coming from, but I also understand from, you know, living in this area, that was a breakdown in the road. Up by 26 Cedar Street, I can understand a little bit of the water intrusion, but when you get down by the couriers, which I don't, I forget what number Cedar Street they are, but you know which one I mean, uh, across from Bob Zott, the Red House, and we just had a picture of that up there. That was a clear indication of a breakdown in the road and there was no water whatsoever around that hole. You kept filling it in all winter long. We kept saying, oh, it's come, come undone again. You were so nice and, and kept abreast of that situation. But I just, there's, there's some accountability with R&D paving. And, you know, unfortunately we had a similar situation up on Ridge Road with this and it wasn't a water intrusion. Um, it was a breakdown on the aggregate on the first layer of the road. And yep, we're going to ultimately end up paying this, paying for this. But I think in the future, we need to really play, pay close attention to it. That's it. Pat? Pat? Yep, go ahead. It doesn't look like Joe, I, I think that Tim is working to try to get Joe back on, so maybe while yes. he's trying to get Joe back on, you should take yes, over. Joe's calling in right now. Oh, okay. I'm back. There he is. Okay, then. Oh, uh, Pat was Pat, finished. Yeah, I'm, well, I could hear. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. I don't know why it says I got a mic, but I don't. Hold on, hold on. Okay, how's that? We can hear you. Okay, terrific. Okay, so yeah, I heard Pat's comments. Um, I would like to uh, call on Eric next. Um, well, I happen to travel that road a little bit. And uh, that road was a wet sponge. It was wet 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 whatever you put on there it was like walking on um you know a puddle that is partially frozen and it breaks that's what walking on that pavement 48 hours after was um you know the, the water went all the way down that road and i think it, it because of the ruts and things that, that were created it did go beyond that catch basin a little bit um that's down by the by the between the couriers and the um the old well place, you know, it's hard to, you know, the, if that water wasn't coming out of that house right there, 20, it was at 26, we wouldn't be having the, this discussion. And, you know, that's a lot of water that went across that road and down that road. It didn't go right down the gutter, like, you know, nice and neat. It went down the road, the entire lane. And there was a lot of rain right before they paved, and the road was a sponge. It has nothing to do with the, you know, it just didn't adhere. It didn't set. Okay. Um, John? Um, I don't think I can add anything more to that. Uh, all right, John, thank you very much. Um, I have very little to add myself, I, excepting I've been up on that stretch road a number of times. Um, it was just like every other section of road, except for it had a lot of water on it. And um, I don't necessarily think it was shoddy workmanship. I don't have the expertise that uh, Peter does, but uh, I know it needed to be resurfaced. No matter what, it needed to be done over again. So uh, that's my my comment on Cedar Street. Now, Peter, you had a Joe. question about the billing. Joe, if, yeah, the Peter. Road, if the road was sloped properly, the water from 26 should have gone across the road, meandered a little bit, give it uh, 20 feet or so, but it should have then gone over to the edge of the road and followed the gutter down. If it was following the road down, then we didn't have a good grade on the sub base because generally you want to try to lay a 
even thickness, so you set the grade the way you want it with the gravel. Okay. So tell me, Peter, um, what do we do now? What is there to be done? It needed to be replaced, certainly. But what, what, do we, what do we do now? Well, we have a problem because we, the board decided to choose the contractor who has to get their mix from a different supplier, so you've got fingers pointing both ways. One will blame, blame laydown, one will blame the supplier. The other bidder was soup to nuts. They did the aggregates, the asphalt, the laydown. So that's something to think in the future. Um, I yeah, don't know. I, it's I like see your point. Some of it, some of it is our, our uh, ticket, I'll buy that, near 26. But looking at that stretch, that is quite a bit more than what we should have been on the hook for. Mm. That's, that's uh, something to seriously take into consideration uh, when going forward with other paving projects. Okay. Um, I, I have a question for Kevin. Uh, okay. Kevin, there was a sinkhole up on Highland Street, and I was wondering if that had been addressed. If so, what the issue was and what you could tell me about that. Or maybe it was In High Street. A sinkhole on High Street or Highland Ave? Yeah. Highland Ave. Highland Ave, yes, I am aware of it. Um, I reached out to sewer depart the sewer department to see if it, if they had anything on, in the ground uh, there. They said no. Um, I reached out to the water department. Um, they don't have anything directly below that sinkhole. Um, so next week, I was going to have the guys... The crew go up, saw cut, and explore with the tra uh, with the uh, excavator to see what's going on up there. But well, I am aware okay. of it. I have it marked out with white paint. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and I have a question about the storm drains. Are we going to get okay. the storm drains cleaned out? Yes. And if so, when? I'm working on the RFP now to send out. There is. Um, the company that did it in the past is no longer in business, so I've had to research other companies um, to do that project. I have money in my budget set aside for that purpose, and, and it will get done. I'm hoping to have that done in June. Okay. Thank you very much. Jeannie, do you have any questions for the uh, director? Uh, I have no questions, but just for the board. I think this... Uh, topic uh, should be closed out. We've got a bill outstanding. Um, I understand that, at least from what I heard, Kevin made a decision about how the road needs to be finished off. He went forward that way. Um, to Peter's point in the future, maybe we need to think about that soup to nuts when it comes to a contractor, but we've got a bill that needs to be paid. And um, I would like to have some either consensus or vote from the board so we can get that um, off the table. I'll make a okay, motion. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Pat. I'll make a motion that we pay the, the $8,800 bill that check, release the check. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a second? I'll second it, Pyra. Seconded by Selectman Pyra. Is there any further discussion? Is there any discussion from callers out there? In, uh, yes, I have, a, I have something to go. Oh, this is Tim Pearson. Uh, okay, the, Tim. Also make a motion to withdraw the same amount from the, uh, the road, streets, bridges, sidewalks, capital reserve fund. Okay, right after we finish with this one. Uh, well, is there any other discussion? Okay, hearing none. Roll call vote. Constantino. Constantino, yes. Og. Og, no. What was it? No. Og, no. Og, no. Let the record show. I vote yes. Eric Pyra. Pyra, yes. John Scanlon. Scanlon, yes. Okay, the motion passes four to one. Left the record show. Mr. Chairman, um, the next thing, Pat? I'd like to make a motion that we take the same amount that we're paying for R&D paving out of the trustee of the trust funds. Uh, 
No, out of the uh, out of sidewalks, bridges, streets, and road streets, bridges, sidewalks, capital reserve fund. Road and there's a letter to, to be signed. What Kim said. Okay, Pat. <laughs> Do we have a motion on the floor or what? Right? Yeah. Uh, is a there a second? Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second that, Scanlon. All right, Scanlon is the second. We have a motion and a second. Um, if there's no other discussion, and I see nobody, um, I'll have a roll call vote. Constantino? Constantino, yes. Fog, no. Uh, Slagman Fog is a no. Flag, I am a yes. Jessamine? Uh, Slagman Pyra? Very yes. Slagman Scanlon? Scanlon, yes. Okay, the motion passes. Uh, thank you very much, Kevin, and uh, we'll you. be talking to you. The next Hold thing on our agenda. Joe. Yeah. We haven't Peter. had a chance to ask Kevin questions. We've been on certain topics. Um, I asked if anybody had any other questions for the director. Hey, Peter, if I you have questions, by all means, Peter, if you have questions, by all means, Kevin, stay with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. First item, I would uh, make sure KRM is aware of the garbage schedule. It'll make it a lot easier sweeping streets if they're not dealing with buckets in the way. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Riverfront Park, since uh, parks can't hire Paul Rushlow to do the um, pick up, litter, check the bathrooms Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, is this something that we're going to ask DPW to pick up? That's correct. Okay. Um, were you asked about replicating the sleigh with something a little sturdier? Yes. I'm working okay. up an estimate that's now for materials. Great. And that's a uh, do whenever. They won't need it till December, so it's nothing um, that's got to be done right off. That's correct. Um, and, then, and then the last thing, um, do you know why there was uh, backup alarms going off at 3.15 a.m. at DPW? Backup alarms? Yes. I'm not aware of any backup. Okay, a resident was awakened at that time this morning. This morning? Mm-hmm. I'm not aware of that, but now that we have that new surveillance camera system, we could actually check that out. Okay. Joe, Joe Jeannie's got a hand up. Yeah, I know. I'm waiting for Peter to finish. <laughs> I see thank you. Okay, thank you, Peter. And my apologies. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, Jeannie, you have questions? I just have a question for Peter relative to parks. Um, you said something about the bathrooms. Are they still closed right now? You're just talking about in the future, correct? So we have not correct. opened up the bathrooms. That is correct. Okay. I was just curious. And Thank regarding you. Regarding parks right now, um, we generally do the porta potties, including the island. Um, are we still on hold with the island for putting porta potties out until we figure out what's be. going on? I would be. Okay, that's um, the way we've stood. I'll relay it back to Bob. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other questions for the director? It's, it's okay. Eric Pyra. Hey. I just, just I had written down a note while um, Kevin was making this presentation, but. Did I understand correctly that the street sweepers are going to be traveling all the way across town to unload their their the sand and then go back across town to finish? No, I, they're going to be utilizing the shop to dump their sand. They don't have a truck that elevates into a into a, another truck. Their okay. their sweepers are a, a rear dump type sweeper, so. It's at ground. It's at um, waist level. I got you. It just Some seems like to be an hour of money wasted for them to travel, say, from over where Joe lives to go all the way over to the town highway garage, and then they got to go back. So that's you know where you could yeah. have a truck there and, and do it with no problem. Well, he's going to be utilizing two trucks. So okay. um, 
It, and the the um, the fill time for their water tanks will be cut into minute uh, minutes versus an hour and a half because they have a trash pump. Well, they'll be uh, drafting water out of the river. Okay. So they have, they're expediting their time in other other areas. Okay. All right. No, thank you. Okay. Welcome. So is there any other questions out there? Is there any questions from the public? I see we have several uh, mysterious callers. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. I'm assuming there aren't. The next thing on well, the next thing on the agenda is Representative Tim Lang. Oh no, it's not. Sorry, my mistake, Chuck. The next thing on the agenda is our town moderator, Chuck Mitchell, who's here to talk to us about the upcoming elections in September and November. Chuck, you have the floor. Hello, Chuck. Turn up your volume on your mic, buddy. How about now, Chuck? I'm not getting anything. Tim, can you help us out here at all? Yeah, uh, Chuck, uh, try try going to the uh, top right gear icon, and to the uh, to the right of your microphone, there's a, a little speaker looking thing, and you can increase the uh, the volume of your microphone there. It'll bring up a it should bring up a dialogue. Uh, alternatively, uh, you might just want to call in. Yeah, that's what I had to do, too, Chuck. I'm having microphone issues. Chuck, I can give you the number if you like. It's one eight six six eight nine nine four six seven nine. And the code the code is eight one seven. Zero two six seven one seven. Then you hit the pound, and if it asks for a uh, audio pin, you just hit pound again. Chuck? Yeah. Chuck, when you connect, I'm going to mute your um, microphone. So we don't get uh, feedback. Isn't technology wonderful? Hello. 
My microphone is muted. Chuck, mute the speakers on your computer. Turn Chuck, off. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. I have turned off my audio. Can you hear me? Yes. I can. Okay, you can, and I can hear you on my cell phone. Okay, Chuck, there. the floor is yours. Yes. Okay. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been participating in what's called the Select Committee on 2020 Emergency Election Support, which was organized uh, by the Secretary of State, Bill Gardner. Their charge is to advise the Secretary of State and the Governor on how to spend $3.2 million in federal monies to assist cities and towns in the two upcoming elections being held in September and November, especially in light of the COVID-19 virus pandemic. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Virtually every group and organization in the state has been heard from so far from the uh, moderators, town clerks, supervisors, uh, uh, every other group and organization practically except for the health experts with Dr. Chan and so forth. And once this committee has been heard, they're going to be making some specific recommendations. However, they have no authority to make any changes to any current laws concerning upcoming elections. All they can do is to advise the state as to how to spe best spend the $3.2 million. My primary concern, and it should be yours too, is to ensure the safety of all of those who come to the polls on election day Many of the election officials, as you well know, fall into the age category of being the more susceptible to the virus. Actually, we cannot afford to wait. And what we need to do is to be proactive. And I'm hoping that the select board will work with me to put together a committee that we can start to move forward with the purchasing of some of the supplies that we know will be needed. I am thinking of such things as full face shields, and also what they call for the protective shields that you now may see in, in stores and so forth in front of workers in the supermarkets and so forth. Until the select committee on the 2020 election committee support uh, group makes its final decisions on how the federal money is to be spent, which by the way, could take some time. We cannot, however, plan that any such monies that we expend at this time might be available to apply for and for which purposes the money will be used for. By the time I finish with my little list here, you will understand, I think, a little bit more about some of the uh, urgencies which have been expressed at this, to this committee. Uh, to begin with, um, we, I feel we need to take care and protection of all the poll workers, especially with the proper PPE, and I feel that is an absolute necessity. I've uh, sent an email out to the ballot clerks, and so far I've heard back from approximately half of them, and they have so far been willing to show up, provided we have proper, uh, proper protection. However, if everyone is to practice safe distancing at the polls, Imagine the fun in registering voters, checking IDs, passing out ballots. Will ballot clerks have to handle somebody's ID and then try to ascertain the validity of that ID from six feet away? If they have to handle an ID, what about cross-contamination or do they put on gloves and then have to change gloves after every single voter passes an ID over? Also in that same uh, vein, if someone comes in and they're wearing a mask and you try to take a driver's license and hold it up and say, well, how do I know this is you? Can we then ask someone to remove a mask? 
Anyway, so how do we offer assistance to any of the uh, disabled or anyone coming through voting, either physically or otherwise requiring um, some assistance? And anyone who is asking for uh, voter assistance most likely would require a full PPE outfit, including the clothing. We need to keep, if everyone is gonna keep six feet apart, could you imagine if we have a high volume turnout, we could have lines going from the lobby all, all the way out into the parking lot. And voters would be told to wear masks. Do we pass out gloves masks to voters? We probably do need to have those items available. If a voter is wearing a mask, can they be told to remove it for ID verification? If a voter has no ID, are we required by law to take, and we are required by law to take their picture, can we insist that they remove their mask? We will need to take voters, should we be taking voters' temperature at the door? If someone is clearly ill, what can we do? Can we refuse them admission? No, we won't be able to. Uh, right now, in the voting booths, which are required by law, have to be at a certain ratio and number. Um, right now, they are suggesting, due to proper social distancing, that we would not be permitted to use adjacent booths. So when we set up uh, that string of 13 booths, we'd only be able to use every other one. How many tabletops would be needed if we can't use every other, uh, only use half of those? Uh, would we need to use the whole gym and how many tabletops would we need it? Because we probably could only have at six foot distancing only two per table. Every person entering the booth would be touching the curtains and by law those curtains are supposed to be closed when they're voting. How are these going to be cleaned? What are we going to do with, we can't use wet, wet wipes in some of the booths because once the ballots become damp they will jam in the AccuVote machine. How many poll workers are we going to need in order to be able to keep all services clean and sterilized and whatever? The governor currently has issued a permit, um, uh, an order to permit people to go to the, instead of going to the polls, if they feel that they're in danger, that they can take and use an absentee ballot. And uh, just the fact that they are concerned about their health would be justification alone. It has been projected that in some communities they may have over 50% of the voters which might take advantage of absentee voting. Should this happen, there is no way that may mostly, most cities and towns are gonna be able to process all these absentee ballots in the usual and customary way within a timely manner. Current absentee ballots which are folded are very stubborn and sometimes don't go into the AccuVote machine and then have to be hand counted. Imagine this process in Tilton if we had to process 1,000 to 1,500 absentee ballots on election day. There have been, uh, it has also been recommended that the state encourage absentee voter registration, uh, which by the way, can be done through apparently a link on the Secretary of State's website, encourage absentee voting. There have been some recommending that the whole process needs to be simplified the process of absentee registration and voting should be made available online. Uh, there's been recommendations to have the state pay postage for everyone who wants to return an absentee ballot. There are some new flexible policies which may allow the uh, absentee ballots to be how they're turned in, like by drive-by or drop boxes. Um, there have been a lot of recommendations about the early handling of absentee ballots right now, which is not permitted. There was an order issued today, uh, number 43, by the governor, which does will, will allow some different things. I don't have the full text of that right with me at the moment. Um, there's also been a lot of recommendations that every town should be mailing out to every single citizen in the state absentee ballots. So when you think about all of these different things that are happening right now, and it's kind of crazy, there, there are so many things going on. The primary responsibility that I'm concerned with right now is voter protection and the protection of all the poll workers and election officials. And I think that we need to move forward on that fairly soon. So I'm hoping that the select board will, in fact, um, work with me and try to put together a committee of a few people so we can start looking at these and the costs. I think Chuck, I'm done. Do you uh, Chuck, do you have 
um, suggestions about people who might be serving on this committee? I don't at this time, although it would probably make sense for the uh, town's health officer, uh, probably at least, uh, I would say the town clerk, I would suggest at least one of the supervisors and um, at least one or two selectmen. Are there any volunteers out there? Pat? Pat's not, Pat's not in the room. John, I, you have my services that day for sure, Chuck, whatever way I can be involved. And I see Eric Tyra is also volunteering. Okay, oh, you have two Pat you, want to be on the, Pat, you want to be on the committee to uh, help figure out what we're going to do? Sure. Okay. Depending on the time, if I don't have another All committee. Right. Yeah, there you go. Well, this is going to be an important one. I just heard Chuck's list. Um, Chuck. Well, I've um, Chuck already on this. No, right. Um, are you going to talk with your town administrator? and the uh, supervisor? I think that uh, the town administrator, Jeannie, should be on it. Um, and I'm thinking okay. that uh, in, the, in the next few weeks, we can try to put together and have Tim set up a, a, a meeting of these people, which I think should include also should include Cindy as well as uh, at least one of, yeah. one of the supervisors. Mm-hmm. Jeannie, you got good. that? Jeannie? I think I saw her head nod. Hmm. Okay. I made the mistake of I, taking off my glasses. Chuck? There is, I, I have done some research already on some of those petitions um, that uh, can go up in front of people like you see in the stores, whether they're acrylic or plexiglass, um, and they range in varying prices. They even have a standalone uh, or what you would call a freestanding that can actually go in front of the ballot box or the uh, uh, AccuVote machine, and they would be willing to custom make a uh, an opening so that people would be able to slide their ballots in, and it would uh, it would do that. But uh, the cost of all of these things, uh, depending upon whether you get the the cheaper ones or the better ones, um, and they range in price for the uh, the the, the Per person screening in the thirty to forty dollar range for the uh, the less expensive to up around seventy or eighty per person for the, those other ones and for the freestanding one that would need to probably go in front of the ballot box about one hundred and seventy dollars. Um, I am hoping that this company AMI that that is a New Hampshire company. Uh, that I'm hoping that the, maybe the state can make a deal with them in order to be able to get some discounted prices. Okay. May I ask a question, Joe? Certainly, Pat Constantino. Chuck, is, it, is this something, you know, with the plexiglass in front of the uh, voting booths and where we check in and so on and so forth, is not is this something that our highway, uh, Kevin, can make? rather than paying $170 for a piece of plexiglass with the stand on it? I would imagine if, um, you know, here again, and I don't know if you realize this, but there is such a difference in cost between buying um, inexpensive plexiglass or less expensive plexiglass than getting a good acrylic one. The acrylic ones, of course, last longer. They don't scratch if you wipe them and things. I am sure that our, our very talented um, um, uh, Department of Public Works could probably be making some of these things. Um, I can certainly send along some designs um, that of what is currently out there that people are using. And I'm sure that they could probably come up with something. Um, if the town wants to bake all of these, that's fine. Um, one of the things right now we haven't really, I, I, I'm trying to visualize you know, our ballot clerks sit there and they have these um, uh, tabletops that they use to keep their books at a slight angle. And one of the things right now is that some of those things that you see in the stores, they have the little slots, but they're on the bottom. So it would be where people would pass things through. 
those wouldn't work very well unless they were to be custom designed. And I can't imagine, we're gonna to have to wait and see what the state says as far as requirements go. But in the meantime, I think you could get plain plexiglass sheets and I'm sure the town could find some way to design and put something together. Okay, thank you, Again, Chuck. Is there any other questions for the uh, moderator? Well, I want to just add one final thing and that is that no matter what we do and when we do it right now, there is no guarantee um, whether or not um, the state will have funds available and for what. Um, this afternoon, uh, which I did not witness the final discussion, there was uh, town clerks going through how they pay, how they have to handle all the absentee ballots. And one of the suggestions was they use the whole $3.2 million to help town clerks handle absentee ballots. So when you get done right now, of not knowing how this committee is gonna steer that 3.2 million, I think it's a good idea to look at alternative ways or look whether deciding whether or not you wanna purchase. And that's probably something that this committee can come up and recommend. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chuck. Um, Peter, Eric Pyra is next and you'll be in the queue. Eric? No, uh, I'm good, very good. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. Uh, oh, Peter. Just Oh, okay. Peter. Yeah. One thing I saw on Facebook recently that might work is you get a freestanding upright piece and they're using like clear shower curtains. So you can see through it, but you've got a shower curtain that's relatively cheap. Um, you can cut it to whatever length you need. Um, that may be another option. The other thing is with masks, I would only buy the N95 um, there's interesting video on YouTube with a guy showing antiperspirant spraying through mass and but the only one that really is effective is the N95. So for the uh, elections, I would suggest we put the vote. Thank you. Okay, Peter. Uh, is there any other questions for Chuck? Just a comment from Selectman Scanlon. John? Uh, yeah, I, I think one of the things is with the uh, materials, if we are going to go that way and make it, um, we might want to start looking into materials immediately, seeing as the way uh, other commodities such as flour and uh, other building materials and that have been going uh, and not being available. Okay, Jeannie, you want to talk with Kevin? Jeannie? I, yes, I will. I think I think uh, we've got to be concerned about how we're going to fund this. Everything else. Um, I, I agree okay. wholeheartedly. Um, Tim uh, Tim Pearson, are you still out there, buddy? Oh yes. Have you, you've been listening. I have. Where do we get the money if we have to come up with it? Uh, well. Uh, that I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to look at. I have identified some some expense lines recently that are unlikely to be used to their fullest extent, um, and that's a lot better answer than my first thought, which was thin air. So um, there you go. Okay, I'm sure if anybody can find it, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so there you go, Chuck. Uh, as soon as we get all the members uh, on the same page, we'll have a meeting at your discretion. Yeah, and I think the sooner the better. And um, in the meantime, uh, once Jeannie puts together the list of everyone who's going to be on this group and then uh, uh, Tim can set it up, I will be, uh, I can send out some examples. As, as a mean, in the meantime, I can send her a copy as well as the select board of some samples of the kinds of uh, of those, what they call them, sneeze screens or sneeze protectors. Um, one of the things that's obviously got to be, and I, I'm not going to argue with Peter's point about uh, shower curtains, but you know, if somebody's got to hold up an ID or something in front of a shower curtain, and you got to hold it up for someone three to six feet away, I'm not sure that's going to make it clear enough to, for people to to see through. Um, I, I don't know, but whatever, uh, I will send some information out. I think the sooner we can get uh, jumping on this, the better we are. 
Okay, and Chuck, would you please be uh, sending out that list you just read off of all? I'll the send things out that, that whole text. I'll send that whole text out to everyone. That's perfect. Thank you ever so much. And uh, yep. without any other questions for the moderator, I don't see anybody with their hand up. Um, we're going to be moving on. Chuck, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll be talking to you soon. My pleasure. Thank you, Chuck. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we now have the next part of the uh, agenda, which is Representative Tim Lang, our local representative, uh, who is here to give us an update on the reopening of New Hampshire. Tim, the floor is yours. Thank you. I uh, appreciate you guys inviting me in. So again, you know, the task force has been meeting, what, I think now for three weeks. We meet at least once a day for two hours, um, going over various industry proposals. Probably the one that have been hitting towns the hardest is the restaurant proposal and how towns are dealing with that. Um, as you know, in that, that guideline, it allows uh, restaurants and food services agencies to move out, out of doors and take their seating outside in phase one starting next Monday. Um, you know, the goal there was to have towns, you know, work with the, uh, with the restaurants to um, facilitate that. We had, we got the state liquor commission to uh, enforcement to put a quick uh, answer form on their uh, website, which allows anybody who has a restaurant that wants to move outside and can designate an area outside can submit a quick form with a quick drawing and a couple pictures and they automatically will get their liquor license extended without the normal process that would occur, um, which is someone come on site and, and inspect everything. And, and that's a, a few week process. Um, this was literally just a couple mouse clicks and you get an automated letter back saying it's been approved for the extension. Um, you know, today we talked about beaches was the big conversation point um, about opening up the beaches. Um, and it, we put a recommendation forward to the governor about the beaches. The big thing around the sea, the seacoast area is the amount of parking we're actually going to limit to help limit the number of people on the beach itself. Um, this week, we voted on a lot of proposals. We put the lodging proposal forward. Um, we put the um, we had put a streaming a performance arts proposal together for um, a couple industries there. Um, a lot of moving parts. You know, the big thing that I always try to stress to people is understand that in moving all of these things forward, we do it in cooperation with Department of Health and Human Services, along with Dr. Chan, that every proposal we put forward is reviewed by them um, and they make adjustments. So there are sometimes we miss a part about public health or, or they want it even tighter than what we did and they'll make adjustments to that. Um, and then it goes to the governor, um, and then the governor will make his decision on timing. He may choose it's not the right time right now, that he wants to wait another week to see what the metrics are doing. Um, but uh, everything has been uh, been put through the filter of public health at least twice before the governor gets it. So uh, I'm happy to, um, one of the conversation points that came out of today about municipalities was making sure municipalities are aware that at the NewHampshireEconomy.com website, there's a, a box you can submit questions of you're dealing with issues around some guidance where you're unclear on what it is. You can go ahead and put in a, a question to the BEA and BEA will get the right state agency to call you back with the right guideline and the way that guideline is being dealt with. Um, also on that same website, NewHampshireEconomy.com, is um, a place you can submit, you can send emails to the task force. So if you have issues you need you want brought up or if they're discussing a topic you're you're interested in you can submit an email all of those emails are read um, they given in a digest to the to the task force um, we get I think we're a little over 1500 emails since the task force was formed we received um, but you know all in all it's been moving forward to health metrics seem to be where you know to, to encourage opening you know again in a slow well-measured pace that takes uh, public health into concern and we'll be watching those numbers and, and, and you know, if necessary, there may be some modifications to orders to deal with anything that might rise up. But I'm happy to answer any questions that the town may have. I do know that the Gopher Committee recently released some funds to municipalities. I think Tilton got a little over 80 grand relative to COVID related expenses. So Jeannie's shaking her head no, but I'm trying to understand. My understanding is 
that there was $86,000 released to Tilton roughly? No, 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 no. So they're eligible for $86,000, but right. they don't automatically get it. And I just spent two hours on the phone today. Um, and um, the, the reams of paperwork to, um, to get that, get that amount, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, so it's not an automatic, uh, Ms. you know, Tim, it's, it's something you have to um, apply for. The first deadline is June 1st. Um, and that, and I'm sure you know what expenses are eligible and what are not. So I just wanted right. to know I, I, I it's it's it was not a, an automatic. I understood it was a drawdown, but there was up to $86,000 you can draw down from um, by submitting the paperwork and they'll reimburse the town for their expenditures. Um, you know, other than that, I mean, anything you guys need for help. So Jeannie, if you're getting, you know, roadblocks somewhere, just let me know and I'll do what I can to, to plow through the roadblock or get it out of your way so you can continue to move on. I, you know, that's the biggest thing I, I'm just saying is if there's anything that's happening re relative to this, especially if the state's in your way, you let me know and I'll see what I can do to get it out of the way. Thank you. Okay. Um, Flagman Constantino. I'm good. Thanks, Tim. I, I see your updates daily. I appreciate them so much. Uh, you're doing a really great job with that. So uh, I, I appreciate you very, very much. And thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Flagman Fogg. I'm all set. Okay. Okay, Peter has no questions. Selectman Pyro. No, uh, nothing. Just thank you for your updates. On I read them on Facebook, and I actually use them several times a day. So thank you. Uh, Selectman Scanlon. No, thanks for uh, the information. All set. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank you myself, Tim, for your for your help with this and uh, for being on top of this and volunteering for this committee to get the state back open again. I appreciate it as a guy, as a resident. Well, yeah, um, anything I can do to help, make sure you reach out and let me know, and I'm happy to uh, to jump in and try to get get whatever I can for you. Okay. Uh, uh, Tim Pearson, do you have any questions for Tim Lang? No, I just echo what everyone else has said, too. Thanks, Tim. Is there anyone out there in the Internet who has a question? We have callers on the line. Um, do any of those callers have questions for Tim at this point? Uh, we only have listeners, Tim. Uh, have thank you very me. much. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Okay. Jeannie? Um, Jeannie? Yeah. Uh, Tim, have you... Are you hearing anything about when it looks like they're gonna um, lift the stay-at-home order? So there's been no conversation around that. Again, everything, all the conversation around that, I should say, is, is relative to the health metrics. So as that trending continues, if you looked at the federal guidelines, they, they um, recommend between 14 and 21 days of downward trending before you move into the next phase. There's three phases in this. So even if you assume the best possible case scenario, it's 63 days from start of phase one to end of everything. Um, and that assumes the best. Oh, yeah. And that doesn't, well, we just started phase one, right? We had retail open on Monday, right? We have next week, we have restaurants opening on Monday, I think, on the 18th. Oh, um, okay. I, I guess I understood. I thought it was um, downward trend from deaths. Um, and I don't think we started that have we we haven't started the downward trend right have we oh no the downward trend is there if you look at the three-day trend you look at the overall trend for the last 21 days and again i don't talk about individual spikes because occasionally i'll have one day that'll spike up usually that's because massachusetts batches the data so when we get data from massachusetts instead of every day they only oh, here's the batch of tests today that um, apply they send us all at once with one date so they'll send us, you know, 15 people that may have gone to a mass hospital from New Hampshire and tested positive, and we'll get over a period of a week, and we'll get that batch in one batch. So the number will spike and then come back down the next day. 
So sometimes it's relative to the batching, the way we're collecting the data. We don't have the exact date that the test was taken. We just know that on this day, the state of Massachusetts gave us 15 positives in the southern tier of the state. So it spikes the number. So did I understand you said that we just started phase one and with the start of phase one is 63 days? Roughly. That's again, if you that's some, that's probably the best case scenario would be you, you, again, the governor's been padding some of the opening. So you'll saw when he announced phase one for restaurants, well, we'll start if we announced phase one for retail. He gave it a week's, you know, he announced it on a Friday, but it wasn't until the whole week later on a Monday before you get open. And the same happened with restaurants. He announced on a Friday and he gave a two week pad. A lot of that had to do with the industry. Um, the industry needed time to get supply chain. They've been closed. Restaurants need to restock all their foods, restock all their liquors and that kind of thing. So the, the, the industry itself asked. We just did the lodging industry, which I'm hoping to hear an announcement on Friday for. Um, and I was the lead for that industry. And they asked for um, a March 22nd date, right? Push, pushing it out. I'm sorry, May 22nd date. Um, so they wanted to push it out a little bit. They need some time to get staffing back, hired back, and all of those kind of things. So some of the industries, even though the governor may be, I'm ready to go, the industry is saying, we're not, we need time to do it right. So give us a week, give us two weeks, give us 10 days, whatever the number is. So, um, you know, it hasn't, but again, so as those phases start, you need 21 days roughly of downward trending data, right? Like not, not spikes, not every day lower than the next, but a trend of data over 21 days. And if that trend continues, we'll move into the next phase. And we just started phase one a week and a half ago, so roughly. All right, okay. thank you. Um, Flegman Fogg. No, everybody? All right, well. Hearing no other uh, questions for Tim, I just say thank you, Tim, for joining us. And if we could do this every three weeks or something, you know, that would be absolutely great. As things progress to keep us in the loop. Yep. Just just send me um, a, a message like you did, and I'm happy to jump on board. Next time, okay, bring your puppy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very <laughs> much. Boy's out in the yard playing with the puppy right now. <laughs> so thanks, guys. Okay, Bye -bye. good night. Okay. Thank you, uh, Representative Lang. The, up next is the Selectman's reports. And first on my list is Peter Fogg. That's uh, Peter, you up? Yeah, it takes, I'm on the uh, slow end of the internet, Joe. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, I keep forgetting. Sorry, buddy. I uh, hit most of the stuff from the parks. However, um, they're wondering, should they, as we move through the um, summer into the fall, be looking at plans for what's left at the 132 field? Um, I'm sure that that will come up in a meeting real soon. And if it does, if we could at least get a set of plans showing what the uh, dimensions are and all. That would be great. That's all I have, Joe. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Uh, turns out I'm up next. And I would like to say uh, residents who need assistance in any area, including COVID-19 related issues, should dial 211. 211 is the connection for New Hampshire residents to the most up-to-date resources they need from specially trained information and referral specialists. Due to COVID-19 and the need for social distancing, we have directed our Department of Public Works to hold off on putting out the benches in town. As soon as it is determined to be safe, the benches will go out. All town buildings remain closed to the public until June 1st, per the governor's recent order, Stay at Home 2.0. This coming Saturday, May 16th, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the New Hampton Fire Department, there will be free testing for COVID-19. You must meet any of the following to get tested. Either have COVID-19 symptoms, be over the age of 60, are a healthcare worker, and have 
the underlying health conditions. Those are the big four. To register for testing, go online at New Hampshire, that's capital N-H dot gov forward slash COVID-19. And the Main Street Committee is going to be hosting a Main Street reopening cer ceremony on Saturday, May 23rd at 10 in front of the America statue at Town Hall. Uh, we're going to have a ribbon cutting and hopefully some music and they're going to have flowers out and there's plans. We're reopening down in, in Tilton, and we hope everybody will come and join us. Uh, the Winter School on Regional High School is planning a 2020 graduation parade on May 20th, which is, what, Wednesday. And uh, that's going to be held at 1 p.m. going over the Cannon Bridge and then coming down into right down Main Street for the seniors of uh, Winnesquam Regional High School graduating class of 2020. And congratulations to them. So that's my report, uh, Selectman Thyra. Yeah, uh, can you hear me yet? Yep. All right. Um, actually, you just mentioned one thing, uh, the, the downtown reopening, are we taking social distancing precautions on that? We are, and personal protection equipment such as we have it and we'll bring out what we got, um, and we'll be six feet apart. It's going to be the Main Street Committee, uh, members of the press, uh, and every selectman is cordially invited to come on down and help us reopen Main Street. All right. And then um, my other question was the, um, and I don't know if this is the right spot for it, but the, the, Honda, the lot where Honda is proposed to go, it seems like they're doing a lot of work there for something that hasn't been approved yet. Hmm. I hadn't noticed that. I can but speak maybe to that. We... Jeannie? So um, apparently um, the, there's excess soil that's being moved onto the site uh, and it is still being owned by, the, the property is owned by AutoServe. So I think that's, it's the deal between him and Mark and Joie. And I understand, I because I, I asked on it, asked about it as well. It's, they got the permits, they got everything they needed. So it seems like it's fine. Okay. I had, uh, let me check my little list here. Everything else I got, we had covered earlier. So I'm good. Okay. Thank you very much, Eric. John Scanlon. I don't have too much here. Um, everybody, we've covered a lot of topics here, important ones. Um, one other important topic that we might want to start thinking about is uh, talking trash. Um, it's uh, the contracts approaching, and I think all of us who went through it before remember how long and how involved it was. Uh, might be a good idea to start getting some feelers out for what's going on with it. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, Selectman Constantino. Thank you, Joe. I've got a couple of things. In um, first, uh, I want to thank Peter for bringing the uh, 132 ball field up because I had that on my list um, to see if the board would like to try to uh, either either work with Parks Commission as a committee or create a subcommittee that's going to um, figure out first from park commissions what they want to do with it because there was some talk whether it, they wanted to put a softball instead of a football field um, they haven't determined that yet I haven't heard anything anyway and then once they once it's figured out what exactly they want to do with that field then try to at some point get that com uh, that committee that we create try to go out and get funding to get that field back in so that we can for next uh, town meeting we can have uh, 
everything in place ready to go so that we can have not only the police station up and running but uh go forward for 132 ball field okay hold on peter peter can you uh bring this to the parks committee uh and um see what they what the consensus is over there on moving forward because we are we don't need to appoint a committee we have a committee yeah i can do that joe uh we just met this week so it'll be a month but i'll do it okay that would be absolutely terrific pat right and if they um you know if they want to work with the board that's fine um you know i i, I would be more than happy to be a part of it because there's going to try to be some type of fundraising involved in it to try to get that uh back to where where it was at some point so thank you um i personally want to thank kevin for the work that he's done in the last couple of weeks at the senior center as you know the the east coast flooring has come up and finished the job uh, the poor man he, he just worked until 10 30 at night to finish the, the work that he was doing up there and um he did a, a fantastic job and then kevin came up and uh put put the um furniture back uh, he wasn't able to do the toilets but that's okay we got it done but and then he had to, like he said before, he had to shim the, the doors and we're very, very grateful for his last minute um, moving around and things like that. Um, he also uh, went above and beyond and, and uh, we spoke with Kelly last Friday, Kelly Sedgley, and uh, Kevin removed all of the old uh, signage on the bus. Um, that's ready to go over to um, Kelly so that she can put on new um, signage, Tilton Senior Center, so on and so forth. Which brings me to, uh, we need a telephone number on it. The committee has uh, thought about having uh, an, our own telephone number to have on the bus so that they can call in to get uh, it to get picked up to go for grocery shopping once a week with the rest of them with everybody or a doctor's appointment and so on I think that this is going to take off the bus is going to be u utilized I don't think we need to burden uh, Gail with this I think we just lost Joe there you have it oh okay only You're my here. picture oh okay so uh, I don't think we need to burden Gail with this because occasionally they'll call and, and Gail will pass the information on to us. I think it's going to be bigger than that. So what I would like to do is to uh, make a motion that we, uh, that the board allow Tim, because it's under the town of Tilton, I can't go out and do this on my own, uh, allow Tim to secure a cell phone dedicated to the Tilton Senior Center paid for by grants and donations from the senior center grants and donations line and that way we will have a telephone number to give kelly sedgley to post on the side of the bus and we will have a cell phone um and the executive committee will handle the the calls coming in and scheduling appointments for getting people um rides back and forth so i will make a motion to um have Tim Pearson, the IT director, to finance director, to secure a cell phone for the town of Tilton Senior Center, dedicated to the Senior Center. Um, I guess that's it, right? To be paid for by grants and donations uh, line in the Senior Center. There is. Uh, is there a second? All right, Selectman Fogg seconds it. Is there any discussion? I have a little discussion. Okay. Uh, the van, the van is uh, the property of the town of Tilton, correct? Correct. Um, will it say town of Tilton on there anywhere? It'll take. It'll say Tilton Senior Center. If you want town of Tilton, you could. Or at least the town seal. It will have the town seal on it. Okay. Can we also put uh, the town hall phone number on there? 
That's just a question because somebody might see the bus and and have questions about it and want to call the town because it's a town thing. The only thing I have with that, Joe, is that people are going to see the town hall number. They will be calling the town hall for rides, and then Gail will get inundated with calls for ride without having the number just for rides on there. You know, I, I okay, okay. Well, as long as they refer to Gail, any other questions that don't concern what you just talked about, I got no problem. Right, because it will be advertised, and and everything else should be the same. If they have questions, like you know the senior elderly exemptions and everything they call gail for that okay you know all I'm right saying? is there any other questions for selectman constantino okay hearing none we have a motion and we have a second roll call vote constantino constantino yes i uh, guess uh, jessamine is a yes uh selectman pyra pyra yes John Scanlon. Scanlon, yes. Okay, the motion is unanimous. Let the record show. Pat? Yeah. All right, so um, going along with the senior center floor. I'm sorry, somebody else talking? Okay. Uh, somebody's um, got their microphone on, that's all. Okay. So the senior center floor was done, but it's the, you know, it's the BCT tile. So this, the uh, executive committee voted um, yesterday to go ahead and have it sealed and waxed and that's going to happen next weekend we're going to have GNC the our current cleaners do not have the capability to do that I called Gail today and she called the cleaners so I called Frank at GNC and they're going to go they're going to do that um, yep they're going to do that the other thing I wanted to mention that we're getting really close to June. June is when we start start going to department heads for merit increases. So I think that we need to make a decision before we do that whether or not we are going to even going to do merit increases. So um, you know these are really hard times and everything. So I think that it would behoove us to start thinking about our finances in that respect um, soon, sooner rather than later. And then if the board decides that, yes, we are, then department heads need to be notified because we only have three or four weeks for them to get that evaluations and everything else in. Um, that's just an FYI, so I don't know which direction you folks, we can talk about it later if you want. Um, Let's talk about it right now while the kind of conversation's on the table. Uh, Jeannie, can you reach out to the uh, department heads and give them this information so that we can proceed in a timely manner? Well, Joe, before uh, we reach out to department heads, I think we need to talk about it amongst the selectmen, whether or not we're going to offer a merit increase or just level it this year because... Uh, of the financial situation that we're in because of COVID. Well, we still need to get those evaluations in, Pat. Well, the evaluations, yeah. You're right, Jim. Yeah. And, I, and I'm on top of that. Okay. All right, Pat? I would just, do the, does the board want to talk about increases or are they prepared to talk about that? We do not have increases for the police department this this year because there's no contract. Well, is there anybody uh, would? Uh, 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 I'm receiving. Uh, All right, the, one at a time, Tim. I, I was just going to point out that they will be receiving the uh, stipends if the board approves that. Who will? The law, law, law enforcement, first responders. That's, well, we that's, in, that's, that. in my, that's in my report. And we Tim. have to decide okay. on that. We have to decide on that. Okay. Uh, okay, one at a time. Uh, uh, so, Jeannie? 
Dana? I will I will tell you that there are other communities who are looking at furloughs, layoffs. Um, I think it is a discussion we have to have, but um, I, I guess what I would like is for Tim and I to get together uh, and talk to you about the next step because we've done the first step, which is look at cutting expenses. And um, you have to look at that next step relative to revenue. So I would say let Tim and I have that discussion about where we suggest we go. Um, yeah, because I, it may, oh, sorry, go ahead. Maybe more than just no merit increases. Okay, Tim. Yeah, I felt uh, uh, I would. There, there are more expenses that we can uh, pare back. Number one. Uh, so I had. I had another round of expense cuts uh, identified, and then um, I've also looked, um, as Ginny knows, you know, looked very closely at um, personnel. So uh, I just think it's uh, I wasn't prepared to discuss that tonight. Uh, so I would I would say the same thing if Ginny and I could have a little time uh, and then bring it to the board. Okay, can we talk, put that on the agenda for next week? Jeannie? Yeah, yes, I think so. How about you, Tim? Do you think we could? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, terrific. All right, I, uh, I have one, one last thing, Joe. All right, Pat, go ahead. Okay, so bear with me because I'm going to read it rather than say it because I might miss what I want to really say. Um, who would have dreamed 10 years ago in a selectman's meeting when I asked permission to use the old Grange Hall to establish a senior center for the senior population in Tilton and surrounding areas that 10 years later, we would celebrate a decade of, the, of its thriving ex existence. But here we are, and my heart is filled with gratitude for the love and support we have gotten from all of you in the community. I particularly would like to thank the executive board, the volunteers, local businesses, the staff at CAP, the employees of the, town, of the town, and the seniors who give us a reason to continue our mission. And last but certainly not least, I would like to recognize the support and help from Chief Cormier and Tim Pearson for the willingness to be there for us when we have needed any type of assistance. My heart is full and my appreciation is endless for each of you. Thank you for Thank you, everyone, from the bottom of my heart, Pat. It's this week is 10 years for the Senior Center. Outstanding. Congratulations to everyone involved over there. It's been a community effort, certainly. Yep. Um, if there's, is there any uh, questions or input from the public? We still have mystery callers on the line. I think okay. the chief might be one of them. Chief, are you out there? I am, uh, um, yeah. Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'm off, I'm off at the PD, and I just want to say thank you to Pat. Um, her and I met there uh, before that all began, and there was no kitchen there. And to see how far it's come over the last 10 years is amazing. And to see all the seniors using it, especially on you know Wednesday nights and lunch times and breakfasts, um, it makes it all worth it. So uh, I guess I'd just say the same thing. Thank you to everyone. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Uh, all right. Mr. If Jerry? there's no other. Yes. Yeah, it's John. Um, just for next week, um, me, Tim and Jeannie, can we get some um, numbers on cost of living, um, what they're at right now for uh, next week? Sure thing. Thanks. Joe, okay. What was the time of the parade for the seniors? Uh, it's at 1 p.m. on the 20th. And so if we were downtown Main Street, they would be going by, right? Well, that's why they call it a parade. Well, you said Cannon <laughs> Bridge, so I don't know which direction they're going. In. Um, well, they're going to come right down. My understanding is they're going to uh, uh, queue up over at the, the grade school and then they're going to come down the road and turn on to Cannon Bridge and run right up Main Street. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Chief Cormier. Yeah, go ahead. 
Can you help facilitate that, please? I I can actually. Yeah, they they sent me an email with the route, and um, it looks like it's going to pass from Northfield uh, into you know into Tilton, and then obviously up into Samerton. Um, and we told them that we would help with the intersections. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely take care of that. I also have a request, Chief, for the 23rd at 10 a.m. They want to string a banner across Main Street in order to cut it with scissors um, right there by the America statue. Uh, it would only be in like a, a few minutes. Is, is that a possibility? Absolutely. So what time on the 23rd? Um, the 23rd is 10 a.m. Okay. Yeah, we'll have someone there. Okay, that's terrific. Thank you ever so much. Um, is there anybody else that wants to ask questions or what have you? That's a no. So next thing up on my agenda is uh, the town administrator, Jeannie Forrester. Thank you, Joe. Uh, you have my weekly update. Number one on the action item is the American flags that we talked about putting up. Uh, we need to fill out a different permit application for the flags because they are temporary, not permanent. Uh, I filled out that application form. It needs to be signed. There's only one signature line, so I need uh, the board to approve the chairman to sign that application. Constantino, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Pyra. Seconded by Selectman Pyra. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Selectman Constantino. Constantino, yes. Fog, yes. Selectman Fog. I would be a yes. Uh, Selectman Jessman. Uh, Selectman Pyra. Pyra, yes. Selectman Scanlon. Scanlon, yes. Okay. The vote is unanimous. Jeannie? Thank you. Uh, you have an application in your file, your e-signature file, for Catherine Dawson, who has applied to serve on the Parks Commission. That needs to be uh, approved by the board. So if you could sign off on At least there are three signatures on that right now, at least. Good. Good. Okay, I, have a question on, I have a question on that. Hasn't she been yeah. serving on that already or no? no I think she that never has. Uh, you got Peter. It's a secretary or whatever. Peter? She has been the uh, secretary to the uh, Parks Commission. She was alternate ex officio when she was on the board of selectmen. Okay, Jeannie? All right. Well, so the next item I have is just a follow up to all of you uh, from last week, the town clerk tax collector had requested to open her office to limited appointments um, that are cumbersome transactions. So I uh, spoke with uh, Kevin Duvall and Cindy Reinhardt um, to see if there was a potential solution that could address Cindy's request but maintain safety in the workplace. So what I'm suggesting for the board to consider is that you know how that glass door, there's a little vestibule in the front, prop the glass mm -hmm. door open um, and install a temporary plexiglass panel with a pass-through window. And there can be a table on one side so they can fill out their paperwork. This will allow the residents to come into the alcove out of the weather, uh, but prevent them from entering the building. Cindy could make her appointments and close to appointment time, unlock the front door for the resident. They, the resident would be required to wear a mask. There would be a small table with a pen in the alcove for them to fill out and sign paperwork and pass it through the window. Cindy and or Kim would wear disposable gloves, use hand sanitizer after the transaction. After appointments for the day had been completed, Cindy and or Kim would wipe down the doors, the surfaces, and spray with disinfectant. Appointments would be limited to two days a week. Um, and the plexiglass panel would also be wiped down and stored until the next appointment day. 
So I was just trying to come up with a compromise that would help the town clerk's tax collector, but keep our employees safe and prevent people from uh, entering the building. So that's what I'm, you know, brought forward for you to consider. Okay, thank you very much. Selectman Conson. I think I think that's a reasonable compromise. I, I don't know how if the table's going to be there. I don't know how she's going to get out and close the door, but that's well, you'll figure it out, I'm sure. Yeah, we talked about that. We've got that figured out. Got it. That it, Pat? Yeah. Okay, Selectman Fogg. If they can make it work, I'm all for it. I've been pilot. My, oh, I said it last time, uh, accessible, handicap accessible. Is that vestibule accessible to people? So how do we work around that? Can't. I mean, the, the only other option is that you don't open at all, which is where we're at right now. No, I know, but I'm just, I'm just worried about someone's in a wheelchair. Do we, you know? It, they would do that transaction over the phone. So why? I, mean, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, um, Eric, but that's the only solution I can come up with um, is coming in through that front door where there is the ability to prevent them from coming into the building. When she asked for these, for this to be open, she said these would be for appointment only for complex cases. So right. having, having said that, um, chances of the, the handicap and ADA issues coming up, Eric, would be. Well, in a situation like that, um, if there was somebody who had handicap, she would go out to the window, out to their car. So How she would have to make an accommodation. Well, there's no, there's no, there's no handicap spaces right in front of town hall either. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. That's all. I'm just trying to worry about lawsuits and things like that. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, my input is that I would like to see it get uh, open um, as quickly as possible and as safely as possible because I know that it's been chaos for the town clerk trying to get some of these things accomplished. And they have, uh, they have stuff they can't handle over the phone. I understand that as well. So I'm, I'm all in favor of this. Um, I don't even know how to put the motion. Um, I would make a motion at this time to allow the town clerk to accept. Here. Oh, I'm sorry, John. I don't see your face. <laughs> I forgot. Sorry, buddy. Uh, John, John, you're yeah. up. Dear boy, this, this bring back some days sitting in the car watching, uh, listen to NPR. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so my big concern is egress and fire safety. Um, I think we should get it cleared, whatever we do, through the fire department because we, if we are blocking a um, way of egress in and out of the building in case of emergency, that would not be cool. Well, there, okay, well done. So there's, there's, there's a second set of doors right there, right next to them. So there's another way to get out of the building. You know, there are two sets of doors in the front. I just, you know, I have Tim or somebody take a look, you know, it's going to be a problem. So. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and you already know what I think. So um, is there, a, would somebody like to make an actual motion? Joe, do we need a motion or do we just do consensus? We we voted we voted to close town hall. I think we, we should to vote to open it back up. Constantine yes. moves that we uh, open with the considerations that Jeannie set forth uh, tonight with um, the table in front of the vestibule and 
all of those considerations. You have to give Gail those considerations, Jeannie. I will. So just uh, to be also... I was going to say just to be clear. So what I would see the motion being is that we're going to um, open the town clerk tax collector uh, portion of the building, only the alcove, um, no more than two days a week, um, whatever those days are that she sets appointments uh, for the most complicated transactions that she cannot do over the phone or via email. Okay, so moved. Is there a second? Fog second. Right. Okay, Peter, you were just under the wire there. We have a motion in a second. Is there any discussion? Um, do you want and, to include in that to have it reviewed by the um, fire department? JC? I think Jeannie will check with, with them, but it doesn't have to be part of the motion. you're going to take care of uh, the I will take care and, I will take yeah. care of everything I have no yeah. doubts John does that take care of it yep okay then uh, is there any other discussion hearing none roll call vote Constantino Constantino yes Bog yes Jessamine is a yes Pyra Pyra, yes. Scanlon. Scanlon, yes. Okay, Jeannie, back to you. The next item up is the first responder COVID-19 program that's been put in place. That funding is part of a $1.25 billion CARES Act federal funding. The estimated cost of the program is approximately $25 million. This is for first responders who would get a uh, full-time first responders would get a $300 a week stipend for eight weeks plus two days. Um, Part-time people, those who work under 30 hours a week would get a $150 a week stipend for eight weeks and two days. Um, and I don't know if you have it in your information, but to be eligible, the person must be a first responder. For our purposes, that means our law enforcement officers. Um, the total would be about for $300 a week for eight weeks and two days, it's like $2,485.71. Uh, dispatchers are not included in the stipend program. The deadline to apply is June 1st. Uh, the town would be responsible for all the applicable taxes, state and local, but we can apply for reimbursement through the CARES Municipal Relief Funds Program. Uh, stipends are not earnable compensation under the New Hampshire Retirement System. Mechanics of the program are that we will apply, listing all eligible employees. The state will then send us a lump sum, which we are free to distribute either weekly or in a lump sum payroll uh, process. The money would be accepted by the town under the statutory authority of RSA 21-P-43, and it does not require a public hearing. That RSA has to do with Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Now, this is a voluntary program, meaning you can choose not to accept the stipend. And in preparation for tonight's meeting, I did ask the collective bargaining unit to provide a letter to the board, which you should have had in your, you have in your board packet, uh, indicating their support in accepting the stipend, as well as acknowledging that this is a one-time federally funded hazardous duty pay, and that some in their bargaining unit the dispatchers will not receive the stipend. So if you agree to the stipend program, we will begin the process of applying for the funds, which includes asking each eligible member to complete an individual funding request form, acknowledging that they can only collect the New Hampshire First Responder COVID-19 stipend program from one municipality. So that's the question to you, would you and did everyone see the letter that was in your packet from the bargaining unit, or do you want me to read that at all? 
You didn't see it? Uh, I saw it. I did not see that. Sorry. Okay, so this is from um, Sergeant Penault, who is the president of the Tilton Police Local 29, and he says, Dear Jeannie, regarding the COVID-19 CARES Act, first responder hazard incentive authorized by the governor on May 4, 2020, we understand this hazard incentive provides a stipend for all police, fire, EMS, and corrections officers working on the front lines in New Hampshire during this unprecedented emergency. We also understand this is a one-time state reimbursed stipend as a result of the COVID-19 CARES Act for all sworn officers of the department, and at this time, dispatchers are not eligible. We acknowledge the state guidelines for the first responder COVID-19 stipend program and greatly appreciate the town facilitating this on our behalf. So I don't know if you have any questions about the program. I know that- Does anybody have any questions or comments for the town administrator? Pat? If I'm under the understanding of what you just read, that we would not be giving the stipend out until we receive stipend, we receive the monies from the um, Homeland, Cons Homeland Security CARES Act that, money. That, that would be my recommendation to the town because as you know, we're watching every single penny. And right. I would, I ha having worked for the state, I would want to see that money in our account before we start giving it out. But it, it comes pretty quickly. And, um, you know, as soon as we get that lump sum here in the town and it goes into our coffers, then Tim can start distributing it. Yeah, I couldn't agree Other, more. I wouldn't want to be paying anything out or borrowing any more additional money uh, to pay out something and waiting on reimbursement. So, my opinion I have would a be. Question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Pat. Uh, now you. My, my opinion would be that we wait until the money comes in to pay it out and that we pay it out in a lump sum and not carry it over the eight weeks um, and two days that we pay it out, uh, preferably after the eight weeks. Okay, um, my question to Tim is how much does this cost the town? There's Nothing. a tax part of it. There's nothing. Didn't he say it was uh, it, it was uh, taxes were taken out of it? No, well, because the care the municipal relief fund uh, will allow us to apply for those expenses. Okay, that takes care of my question, uh, Peter. Other than, other than it might cause a little yep. more work for Tim. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Uh, Peter, welcome. I'm good. John? Yeah, I have two questions. The first one would be, is the prosecutor covered under that? And no. the second question, okay. The second question is, is this for actual hours work? So let's say an officer um, takes uh, two days of vacation, one of the weeks, does he still get the full $300? Yes. Okay, there you go. Sorry. Yeah. So I, my, I guess I, I understand this. So even if he wasn't working, he was on vacation, he would get the three hundred dollars pay for that week. Actually, so let me. Let, right? That was one of the questions that uh, NHMA proposed uh, to learn. You know, to get the details of this. And this was the question they posed: If a first responder is full time and takes some vacation leave, that would bring their actual hours worked for a week below 30 hours, would they be eligible for the stipend? For a $150 stipend part-time that week, or would they not be eligible for any stipend that week? And the response was, if the responder is full-time, qualified, willing and able to respond to and perform the required responsibilities of their respective position, they are eligible for the full-time stipend. So that doesn't address the whole question of being on vacation. No, it does because you, unless they said I'm going on vacation and I will not be available, but if I they are I'm available, sure. yeah. Okay, John. 
I, so I guess we could call somebody in from vacation? Yes. Yes. And under that, it's in our contract with them too and all that? That's, that is that. That is exactly why I asked uh, yeah. for a letter from the bargaining unit because I'm looking to protect the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I guess the willing and able part is I'm a little gray area. No, willing and able means you have to be available for duty. And if you're on vacation, you're really not, are you? Oh, yes, you could be called in. It happens now, I believe. The chief is on the line if he wants to speak to this. Chief? Yeah, so I, I might be able to help. I was on a call about that as well with um, uh, EMD. So if they're on vacation, as long as they're eligible to come in, uh, then they would be eligible for the stipend. The exception would be if they were like out of country and not available to come in in an emergency, then they would not be eligible for that pay period. Okay. Thank you very much for that information. So, and by, and by the, excuse me, One by, the way, Jeannie, sorry, by the way, they also have to complete a document um, and and if they're, my understanding is there will be an audit and if they're, it's discovered that they, let's say we're out of the country and not available, that would have to be, they would have to return that. Joe? Pat? Have you asked? I, I would just like to just re, reverse my decision on making it a lump payment based on what Jeannie just said. We would need to make sure that they're here every week available and willing and available so i would pay it out over eight weeks yeah so would i but we don't have a motion on the floor is there anybody who would like to make a motion i'd like to oh. hear tim's i'd like to hear tim's take on this tim uh well uh so what i heard you say earlier pat was that um uh that we draw down the entire amount and pay it in one lump sum at the end of the eight weeks. So if it's at the end of the eight weeks, then you would know, of course, if someone had been out for an extended time, um, the, the, um, you know, so I guess, uh, you know, I, I've given it some thought. Uh, I see some advantages to, you know, one lump sum payment. Uh, it will cause a little higher uh, withholding taxes uh, for the employees, but uh, not, I don't think it'll be, um, uh, you know, over the course of that time, the withholding versus the withholding in one payment, you know, be a little bit different, but um, it would certainly be easier to do it in one lump sum uh, from our perspective. Um, and uh, particularly tracking and recouping our costs uh, is really important to me. So um, I guess I, you know, I, um, I could see it either way, honestly. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll handle it whichever way you want to do it. Well, I, I personally would rather them get the 300 bucks every week. Um, money's important and, and yeah, lump sum payment is really good, but without direction from the police union, uh, I would be in favor of giving, dispersing the money on a weekly basis. So, that said, is there a motion to be made? I'm going to make a motion that we, um, I'm going to work this. Make a motion that we accept the, what's it called, stipend or first responded, first responding stipend for our police department for $300 times eight weeks plus two days for a full time first respond police department and $150 times eight weeks plus two days for our part-time employees um, to be paid when we receive that back from Homeland uh, CARES Act. Um, 
and I'm going to say pay it in a lump sum at the end of the eight weeks so that we know who we're paying and who we're not paying. Second. Fog. We have a motion and a second. And uh, is there any discussion? I think it should be paid out weekly. How about you, John? Uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I'm looking at all the stuff that we have to review, and that has to be reviewed on a weekly basis. That it, if we pay it in a lump sum, it'd be easier to uh, a lot time um, to do that. So I, that's why I was thinking with the. Um, like the motion. Peter has his hand okay. up. Yep, Peter. Since it's after the fact and they've already done the eight weeks, why do it weekly? Pay it and get it over with. Whatever oh, it affects the taxes, they'll get back when they file their returns. Uh, I'm curious. So you're saying we should, Peter, you saying no, that we should pay them in advance? No, we, we're waiting till we collect the funds, which is going to be after the fact. That's right. He's right. I don't understand that. We're not paying them until we receive the funds. They're working right. now, Joe. They're working now, I Joe. Understand. I know. Right. I get that. They're we're earning gonna... it now, Joe. We're not paying it till a month or more from now. We have to apply. Yeah, for it. It's, it's I understand take that. We're, it's going to take time to apply for it. By the time we apply for it, the eight weeks might be over. True enough. So what day is, does this start with? When does the $300 start? Well, it started... Um, last Monday, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so, last Monday. Okay, so they've got $300 in the bank now if this passes. No, we got to collect the funds. No, I understand that, but if the, if this vote passes and we collect the funds, they're already accrued three hundred dollars or one fifty accordingly. Correct. Okay, I have no further questions. Are there any questions out there? I would just say okay. I, I don't I don't have a question, but I'd just say I think it is given the financial situation. Uh, it's only prudent for us. I understand what you're saying, that it would be nice to give it to them in their check every week, but we just don't have the kind of money to front that right now. And that's what we'd be doing until we get the money. Okay, I get it. Um, so if there's no other conversation in regard to this subject, I'll take a roll call vote. Selectman Constantino. Constantino, yes. Bog, uh, yes. Selectman, Selectman Pyra. Yes. Selectman Scammon. Yes. So and I, I am. Wait a minute. I didn't vote. <laughs> Selectman Jessman votes. Yes. Oh, okay, the I motion just, passes. It's I, just, I just want to make sure what did, did we vote on a lump sum? Or was that what the motion was? It at was a end. lump sum at the end. Okay. All right. And uh, it's back to you, Jeannie. All right. Um, I have the chief is on the line. Uh, he submitted a letter today that I asked him to come in and speak to you about. It was in your board packet. It is re relative to a vehicle, which we don't want to identify on in public. But, um, Chief, do you want to speak to this? Yeah, sure. So that the... Um uh, Attorney General's Office and DEA needed one more letter that uh, continues our application process for one of the vehicles that we spoke to the board about previously uh, that's in process of being forfeited. It was a um, Toyota pickup truck. And this just keeps that process going towards uh, hopefully eventually taking possession of that. And uh, we still w won't know until sometime in July or August um, if we do get possession of that. But the document that uh, is before you or maybe in your packet is um, something that the DEA and U.S. Attorney's Office uh, sent to the captain um, 
you know, to forward to the board. I have a question, Chief. Um, sure. Is this, is this vehicle only to be used for drug investigations? Yes, um, and that's uh, one of the reasons detectives wanted it is to, you know, obviously be able to do, you know, the undercover investigations. And I think when I spoke with the board last time, uh, we said that, you know, when we got took possession of that, we'd, you know, come back to the board and, and let them know if there was any plan to do anything else other than that. As of right now, their intent was to use it in an undercover capacity and they feel it would be really useful. Um, and um, it, it does nothing out of pocket for us because uh, it's all done with forfeiture. Now, I hate to, I hate to, I know this is going to sound bad, but this is not, I got to move this weekend and I need the truck, right? No, no, no. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I won't belabor the point. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pat Constantino, you have a question for the chief. So, are, are we doing away with the other one, or are we? Um, so the the way they uh, do these surveillances is they typically uh, try to use two vehicles. One is assigned to to the backup officer for officer sa officer safety, and so for that second vehicle, they've been uh, improvising, borrowing, and and you know being creative but it's it's um the right way to do it is to have two undercover vehicles when they're doing a surveillance and so they they really feel that this will put them in a place where they don't have to improvise and take chances anymore and so um i i told them that um you know uh if and when we do take possession that you know we would come back to the board and just kind of brief them on the plan and uh, they were okay with that. So this this document is actually just keeping our application in process. This was brought to the board not too long ago, and we we nixed it because we would be keeping two um, undercover car vehicles on board now, and that would make how many vehicles for the police department would we have to? Um, ensure make maintain and how many would that make well so right now that yeah it would be a, a second undercover vehicle um they like i said sometimes they they're reaching out to local dealers to try and borrow one that isn't always available but if they're doing an undercover buy and they have a CI in the vehicle with the buy vehicle, usually there's a second undercover officer uh, surveilling them, following them, and they just said that, you know, the, the right way to do it is, is have two. And then what they typically do is every tr couple of years, they try to rotate one out because eventually they just become known um, and, you know, no longer usable. So that's the other part of it is, is the, you know, the other one would probably rotate down to be more of that backup car and not used as much where the, the, the newer one would be the primary buy vehicle, if, if that helps explain it. Uh, that, that certainly explains it, but I, you know, we can find something always to do with this may happen or that may happen in this scenario and it's great to see that they're so active and I and I support them 150% and you know that but do we actually need that second vehicle if you were to get rid of the other one I would be all for it I just can't see keeping these vehicles on board all the time sure so okay I mean they there are times where without that second vehicle they would have to again go out and reach out to a local dealer and try and borrow one and um it's just not the right way to do it and i i think trying to run without a backup uh, cover officer is risky too and and again the, when they're doing these type of operations they can't be in even anything that's you know used as kind of a 
an unmarked vehicle like the captain would drive or, or that type of vehicle uh, just because it would be too obvious. So they try to use something that typically doesn't look like a police car. Uh, and so I think that second vehicle would be used a lot less. Uh, it would just be um, used as a, a more of a backup officer type vehicle. And then that the vehicle that we're talking about would then become the primary buy vehicle. Uh, from talking to detectives, I think that's their intent. Okay, Pat, do you have a new question? No, I'm good. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll just wait for everybody else to say something. Okay, Selectman Fogg. Did the chief say we had something in our board packet regarding that? Because I can't find it. <laughs> I it, I just sent it to you all again in your in an email. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, it's like in Pyra. You, you've got your mute up. Oh, there you go. There we go. <laughs> can you get me now? I can hear you now. I think I'm. It's slower than Peter's internet. Um, no, I'm good. I, mean, I don't. I don't. I'm not privy to the earlier conversations. Um, so I'm just going based on what I'm learning today. Okay, thank you, Eric. Selectman like Scanlon. What are the numbers we're talking about that we're, we're putting out? Can, can we get a, a financial statement? What this could cost? You know. Tim? Uh, in terms of ongoing maintenance? Uh, just total cost. Like, uh, once we add that in, how much are we going to be paying for gas, insurance, and, uh, you know, all that sort of stuff? Uh, I, could, uh, I don't have a number off the top of my head. I could look to see what uh, we're spending on the uh, the existing vehicle we have and see about that insurance is really a negligible amount uh the the bigger amounts would be um repairs parts and um and possibly gasoline but i don't think there's a lot of miles put on these cars is that correct chief uh, no, no and actually um if if need be and i think it would help uh repairs and parts i could uh take back to forfeiture if we have it so you know, if if all of a sudden the car needed tires, uh, we could use forfeiture for that. Can I answer your yeah, question? So, yeah, if I could get the numbers. Yeah, well, I just want to hear the actual numbers. That's all. Chief, do you know? I, you know, I, I, I don't. I, I believe it's minimal. I'm going to knock on wood, but I don't think we've had to really do much to that vehicle. It's it just, I think, had, um, you know, the routine oil changes and brakes that I know of. I can't think of a time where we've had to do anything other than that to it. Because it just doesn't get the, the wear and tear that a cruiser does. A lot of the surveillances are, are, are usually sitting at a location. Don? Oh, that's it. just numbers. That's all I want to know. Okay. Um, I'm up last, and uh, I I have one of those pickup trucks, and um, I've owned it for years and never had any problem with it um, that required any kind of – just I don't even think I've put tires on it. I don't drive it that much. Um, and I would be loath to – deny something to the police department at this minimum amount of expense that uh, would be any kind of help to them in trying to reduce the amount of drugs that come through this town. Uh, I look at the arrest reports and I look at, you know, uh, the drug investigations and uh, it just seems like a common sense safety move to me. The fact that you guys have been scrounging around to get a backup car and 
just seems like if you don't have the opportunity and one guy's got to go in there by themselves and it goes bad, then that's going to reflect poorly on, on, well, it's just to reflect hell. It's going to be a bad situation. That's my own personal take on it. Um, so d do we have a motion to be made? Is there anybody out there? I move we take possession of the vehicle. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion in a second. Um, Pat, you want to go one last time? Well, uh, can you come back to me? Peter? I'm good. Eric? I'm good. John, and I just uh, just stand by. I just like to see the numbers. That's all. Okay. Well, uh, Tim, you'll be getting us that number in conjunction with the keep. I expect. Uh, I'll I'll do what I can. My my, off the top of my head, I would think it would be less than five hundred a year. But um, but I'll I'll see if I can work up some numbers on that. Okay, you might get with Kevin because he could tell you about the repair history and what have you, too. Um, uh, Joe? And I have, Joe? Yes, John. Uh, it's 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 the chief. Uh, I know I do know oh, I to add that, that, that Kevin did check out the vehicle and said that it's in good sound shape. They had Kevin go through it. Okay. John, you have something else? Do we know what the present vehicle cost is here? Uh, well, With gas that's, and that's what I was uh, saying, uh, John, that uh, I, I don't have that number off the top of my head, but I, I, would, um, I would expect it to be a very low number, probably uh, $500 or less. Okay. If there's no other discussion, roll call vote. Selectman Constantino. I'm really struggling with this one because of our expenses uh, for the town. And um, can you give me a minute and come back to me last? I will. Second fog. Fog, yes. Second pyra. Pyra, yes. Second scanlon. I'm going to uh, present. Second Constantino. Um, I I do wholeheartedly support the um, this endeavor. Uh, I, I'm going to, although I don't want to make this expenditure at this time, but um, yes, I'm going to vote yes. Okay. And I am a hard yes. Um, thank you very much. We have uh, four yeses in a present, and uh, we should go ahead and uh, do what we got to do to get this pickup truck taken care of. Can you? Thank you, board. Thank you, Thank you Chief. Uh, so I won't go through the FYI, but couple things that came in late. Uh, there was a letter from uh, John Tigg regarding the Tilton Northfield Island, just as a follow up. It's in your packet, and um, I will send a copy off to the Northfield Select Board, just laying out the process for the conveyance of the island. Uh, there was uh, the deadline for the part-time budget committee secretary is tomorrow. At, at the time that I wrote this, uh, we had one application from internally. We received, we received another uh, application after the fact from a, a person from Loudoun, New Hampshire. So uh, by next week, 
we'll see what we have. I just wanted to give you an update on that. Can I ask you a question on that? Yes. Uh, How much did it cost us for advertising on this? Um, probably probably uh, three, four hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Um, so there was a uh, one of the things uh, I will let the chief mention that he didn't say anything. I know he doesn't have a report, but I'll, I'll just remind him after I'm finished here. Um, you got a letter from the selectman received an anonymous letter from a resident that was in your board packet. I did follow up with the chief on that. And uh, I don't. I, I see you shaking your head. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I didn't that. get it. We didn't get it in the board. Oh, you oh you're saying you didn't get it? No. Oh. Okay. Well, we can we can talk about it next week. It's okay. there's okay. nothing urgent. The chief looked into it, so we'll talk about it next week. Um, the uh, you have uh, I think on your report for me you have a couple reminders about meetings you saw those next thursday yep. the 21st we'll have the public meeting on the peabody speed bumps and then uh chief i didn't know if you wanted to mention to the selectmen about the rotary club's mask up new hampshire sure so um the the, the Rotary Club, uh, all the Rotary Clubs in the Lakes region are partnering with the Common Man on a mask giveaway program. Uh, Alex Ray purchased a mask, about 65,000 masks, and he's distributing to all the Rotary Clubs, uh, actually outside the Lakes region as well, including Manchester and Nashua. And they've predetermined dates that each Rotary Club would partner with their local common man restaurant and then pass out the mask for uh, some predetermined hours at a location and, and kind of put it out to the community. So the Tilton Northfield Rotary is actually uh, looking to do that uh, next weekend. It'll be Friday and Saturday and Sunday, uh, Memorial Day weekend. And I know they're going to be starting at the high school, I believe, uh, from 3 to 7. And then again uh, on Saturday, and I, I want to get the hours for you so I don't uh, give you the wrong hours on that. Give me one second. And then again, it's going to be on the 23rd and 24th from 10 to 2. And so I think the plan is they're going to do it where uh, they do the food pickups by the cafetorium at the high school. So cars will kind of make that loop from the senior lot, uh, come around and then exit by the cafetorium. They'll just basically ask to shout out how, how many masks they need. And then they'll get those masks uh, handed to them. Actually, I think they're using like some sort of grabber thing so they don't have to get close to your car. And so if you pull up and you say, I need four masks, they'll, they'll hand you four masks and you can drive away. Um, the Rotary Clubs are taking donations. Uh, at each one of these events, but you don't have to donate. And from what I'm told, they still have about 50,000 masks to give out. They're uh, cloth masks that are washable and reusable. And um, uh, it's a really good program to get those masks out to everybody. So that'll be Memorial Day weekend. And I believe the Rotary is putting that out on their Facebook page. Okay, thank you very much. Jeannie, you have anything else? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I because my screen, can you see me? Uh, yes, I can see you. Okay, because I can't, <laughs> something happened to my screen. Um, oh, okay, there I am. Um, so, the I, I was just, I went on to look in your board packet to see why you didn't have that information. It's actually in your FYI file. Uh, those those things that you said you didn't have. Um, 
So there is a, I, I would like you to take a look in there because the letter uh, from the anonymous person is in there as well as a article from the Laconia Daily Sun that um, I would bring to your attention and I marked um, a section that I think you should read at some point. Not anything for discussion, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Um, and then one other item I have a while, a couple weeks ago, uh, John Scanlon asked about reaching out to the business community and I had mentioned that I had been doing that. Tim and I had been talking about that and I did hear back from one uh, particular fairly large um, retailer uh, in the community uh, who was asking for the possibility of deferments of penalties and interest or extensions on tax payments. So I just wanted to let you know that was some feedback that we've got. I don't think at this point we're really in any position to do anything. I st Tim and I still need to figure out where we're at relative to, you know, where we're headed in the next month. So I just, I, I wanted to bring that to your attention. Joe. Thank you very much. Yes. Peter. I still can't find it in the FYI unless it's under a, a different meeting date. I'm under the 514. And it's I've under, got the me too. Huh? I can't find it either. Did you, Jamie? so you're under, because I just, you see anything that says firearms? No. Yes. Uh, that was somewhere else. Let me go back. Jamie, would, you like to, would you like me to put it up on the screen? No. Okay. Um, it's it's in the, did you find it? Yes, Tim? it's under uh, uh, the board packets for the 514 under FYI, uh, yep. and it's called firearms.pdf. Yep, and then there's also one that says LDS. I only have four showing in the Chiefs Report, COVID Weekly Report, the pavement images, and another scan that uh, was the uh, tear ticket from Pike. Uh, maybe if you try refreshing. I found it. I got slow internet, Tim. I'm on the wrong end of town. I, know. I mean, I mean, we can't we can't talk about it. It's public. I, you know, if, if you want to talk about it, if you want Tim to put it on the screen, I just no, I've and got it. And and the chief has has looked into it uh, for us as well. Is it possible to email that? Um, yeah, I can I can send it to you. Tim, I hate to leave the screen in the... <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. I'll send it to the board. No, I already... Oh, I see. Out of the packet. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I think the chief wanted it, too. Um, so, I, um, Mr. Chairman, I'm done. Unless somebody oh, has okay. questions. Are there any questions for the town administrator? Okay. I don't think so. um, is there any other business? Well, no, wait, wait. Is there any comment from the public? We still have one Misty caller on here. Nope. Got nothing. Okie dokie then. Is there any other business to come before the Board of Selectmen this evening? Uh, just one thing, if I may mention. Okay. Uh, that yep. the uh, the withdrawal from the capital reserve fund, the letter is in your uh, sign now, uh, awaiting your signatures. And uh, there have been some people that signed it, but I don't have enough to to uh, execute it. I don't believe. So if you'd take a look at that, everything else is signed. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. If there's so, no Pat, I, Pat, do you, have, do you have an idea of putting that on our agenda next week for people coming in? Um, uh, I don't know if there's anybody coming in, is there, Jeannie? Well, yes, you have at 6 o'clock, you have the public meeting on the Peabody um, Street. Speed well, pub, the public hearing, yes. Yep. Uh, but no people are scheduled. And you have Leanne for her report on land use. Okay. Um, 
Tim's got his finger up. I think he probably wants to be on the agenda. Correct. Outstanding. And and we are we are going to have to have a discussion, and I'm hoping that we can have that discussion next week about uh, again the CARES Act because if we're going to apply for some of that money, um, we need to have. The deadline is June 1st, so it's a lot of paperwork, and we need to have a public hearing that needs to be posted for you to agree to this. So um, I don't know if. Jenny, may I Can ask we do this? I, yeah. I thought you did, uh, So a public hearing is not required to accept the money, a public hearing is required for the distrib distribution? No, well, no, I'm not talking about the, um, not talking about the, the first responder. I'm talking about the municipal relief fund. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Do we still have time to do proper public notice for uh, that that public hearing prior to June 1st? Um, well, I would, I would want to do it. Uh, I, we would have everything ready to submit it, but so I'd want to have the. Um, well, I guess we're going to have to have that public hearing. We have to go check the dates. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Have to have it next week. Yeah. <coughs> well, there you go. Looks that way. We're gonna have a busy. Is that week. enough notice? Yeah, seven days. Okay. Right. Okay, then let's do that. And then we talk about the financial portion of it with the merit. You're going, you and Tim are coming back with information on that. Okay. Yep. That's correct. Good meeting. Okay. Well, if there's no other no. business to come before the board of selectmen this evening, uh, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Uh, roll call vote, Constantino? Yes. Fog, yes. Fog. No, I'm definitely a yes. How about you, Eric? Sure, yes. John Scanlon? Sure, yeah. Okay, well, thank you all very much. Thanks to everybody who participated. And good night. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night.